welcome to all those joining us as we kick off another thrilling round of Formula 2 racing at Imola. It's 3.1 miles around Imola with 19 turns to master, 9 right-handers and 10 left. And note as well that Imola is one of the few tracks that's driven anti-clockwise. Keep an eye on the exit from turn 18. A good exit there leading into the circuit's only DRS zone will probably be the setup for some of today's best overtaking opportunities. As we await the start of another hugely anticipated Formula 2 race, I'm joined again by Davide Valsecchi. Davide, as a former GP2 champion, can we get some insight to what is running through these young drivers' heads as they sit out on the grid? Ciao, Alex. It's a pleasure to be here. They are nervy moments. There is no doubts about that. Mental strength is the key to remaining calm and focusing on the upcoming race. Formula 2 is so competitive and all of these drivers know that they are going to be pushing each other all of the way. In this sport, you have to be able to control your nerves. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. As I'm sure you guys have seen from the intro, I'm back with another lovely F2 race. Today we're at Imola for what is set to be hopefully a good sprint race for us of course. Last time in the series, we had the lovely qualifying session. If you guys haven't watched that, I would highly recommend it. Um, I'd probably click off the video now and go and watch that. It was so close at one point. You know, the top fives tightly contested, about under 10th or something. Really, really close. And it ended up being a fairly close result. But a really good, strong pole position from Bent Viscal. But, of course, Brent will be starting P10 for today's race because it is a reverse top 10 grid, which pushes us from P3 down to P8. Of course, Brent behind, and he will be a lot quicker, so will P2. So he's going to have an interesting dynamic of those charging at us, but maybe the slowest cars at the front. We could get quite a train in this Imola Grand Prix race in terms of the strategy a zero stop here you're allowed to do that in the lovely sprint races and you can either choose the softs or the mediums but of course when it's only 13 laps at a track with low tire wear it's pretty much a no-brainer zero stop on the soft tire compounds with the second strategy being over two seconds slower now we've had a look at the strategy, let's go across to the grid. The grid then, you guys who have watched qualifying will already know, so I'm not going to just go over it again and again and again, but Alessio Delada will line up on pole after P10 in qualifying with Yuri Vips alongside. Then you've got Poucher, Lawson, P3 and 4 with Oscar Piastri, P Five high tech Grand Prix looking great for this one. P2 and 4. They'll be hoping they can get some really decent points at this race. In terms of who we've seen at the top, unless you're delayed or really high up there in the championship, Yuri Vips, Poucher, Lawson, Piastri, Fittipaldi, they've all been up there at some point this season. And definitely the top 10 that we've got at the moment certainly looks quite likely to be being the top 10 towards the end of the season, or at least most of them will be, with the exception maybe David Beckman might get into the top 10 too come the end of the season. Of course, we can't really talk too much about the implications of the grid for the Drivers' Championship and the Constructors' Championship because we don't really know yet. But my teammate Oscar Piastri right in the thick of it here. It's going to be an interesting one if he can try and stay there, push forward maybe at the slower cars. Hopefully my teammate can fly the flag for Prima in this one with ourselves starting in 8th which is of course the final points position. The Rims and Deli will start just ahead of us. P7 for MP Motorsport and an MP Motorsport sandwich here with Vershaw behind in P9. Paul Sitter Viscal for Trident P10 and then heading down to 15th you've got Beckman, the two Carlins of Deruvler and Tictum, Armstrong for Dams and Huan Yu Zhou for Uni Vertossi Racing. Juan Yu, you know, maybe Armstrong. I would have expected these sort of guys to be getting better results, along with the likes of Jack Aitken and Drugovic, but they've been sat outside the top ten 
at Bahrain and its trend is continuing here. It'll be interesting to see if they can try and push forward a bit in this race and maybe start to get into the points battle because really, once you've had th this race and you haven't scored yet, you're certainly going to be quite a way adrift and there's going to be a lot of work for you to do in the upcoming races after you've had three and you've got people on nearly 50 points and you're sat there with none, it's going to be probably very unlikely for them to be able to catch up. So, like some Joe, they've got a lot of work to do. Then Sato, Aitken, Drugovic, Nissany, Samaya, Lungard and Boschung round out the 22. Lungard's really struggled so far along with Boschung. Those two, Samaya, like Nissany, they haven't had great results so far. But, yeah, Dams and Univertosi racing. You can see both their cars really far down the order. It's going to be an interesting one for them to see if they can try and pull it back because they're really going to struggle in the Constructors' Championship this season. But ourselves, Prima, taking a huge lead. And we're also taking a huge lead in the Championship. So we're going to start P8. Everyone on the softs. And we're going to get into the racing in a second. However, you guys, I know I brag about it. If you haven't already, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you can hit the like button. We're going to get into some F2 action now. Let's get into some F2 action then round Imola. Five red lights. They're out and away we go here. Really interesting with F2 cars that you can take loads of the throttle on the start and you can see that my teammate Piastri has not had a good start. We're ahead of Larim Zendeli heading into the first corner here. We've got to just tiptoe round it a bit as we've got Fittipaldi, Lawson and Vips Three wide in front, and there was a bit of collision as we're pushed off the track by Zendeli. We were pushed off the track there. You've got to leave some space, surely. Basic stuff here, and that's us down to P10. We're fighting with Viscal, but there was no space left, and we'll have to have a look at a replay of that, but I got nowhere to go there. I've been absolutely pushed. And that is frustrating, to say the least, for us here. That's us down to P10. Can we go for a move on Beckman here? We'll get a little bit all over the places behind Daruvala and Viscal. You'll be able to see in the mirror at the top. And Daruvala is up in front. He managed the move up there. Well, we didn't manage to get a move on Beckman. But I'm sure that Viscal will be a little bit quicker and might be coming back for a move later on in this one. But... A real frustrating one here. No space left there. And what was a very decent start came rocketing down into something quite disappointing. Beckman, of course, in front. He's P9. Then we've got Richard Vershaw and Lorim Zendeli. My teammate didn't get the best of starts as Delader, of course, goes quickest. He still leads this one. We're going to have a look at a replay now. We should be comfortable from Daruva to wait. We might wait on that replay. Because Jehan Daruvala, in that lovely Red Bull livery of an F2 car, manages to fight and then behind, and Daruvala's round, there was contact with Ben Viscal, and now we're going to have to go to a replay of the race start, and then of that incident, Viscal has sent Daruvala spinning round. What an incident here, as we go very wide onto there. But we need to look at a replay of these incidents here. What a race start. And then he, Daruvala, sent round by this girl. That is the usual replay of the race start. Five red lights, they went out. And it was a good start for Delader on the front row. And Poucher got away decently well. I think he got into the lead off the start. Yeah, we got a decent start too. We were then gliding down that left-hand side. Three wide into the first corner. You've got to admire this. Two, three wide there. And then we were forced out. And that really cost us down this straight. We then lost out to those in front and managed just to stay ahead of Viscal coming through here. Real frustration, though, for ourselves to be have good, such a great start and then just be pushed out wide not too bad though p10 it's not a disaster worst things could have happened being pushed onto the gravel but there we go no we lost it on the exit there but not too bad of a start for us 
we just have to push from there and hopefully regain a few positions during this race. Well, I also wanted to show you guys a quick clip of Poucher's start. It was a fantastic one, got away way better than Vips. And Deleda, heading down the main straight, gets way past Vips, but then Deleda out, breaks him into turn one. We get a lovely side-by-side -side action through there, and Deleda keeps the lead. Meanwhile, Liam Lawson behind, then Enzo Fittipaldi, Vips, and my teammate Oscar Piastri back there and now in a second we can have a look at what happened to ourselves being pushed out wide well this is what happened to us into the first corner we were into p7 rivaling a little bit to try and keep it and then in this situation you'll just see we got shoved out wide onto the gravel Vershaw Beckman come through because of that because we're pushed out by Zendeli and then through here we have to defend from Viscal for a second down to 11th, but dropped down to 10th because we shoved out wide onto the gravel. We had nowhere to go. And now all we can do in this one is try to recover. Well, then I thought I'd show this to you guys too. The replay of the lap 2 incident with Jehan Daruvala and Viscal. Of course, we are there. And then you can see Daruvala try to send it down the inside. We outbreak them both. And then you've got this side-by-side -side through here. Takes a lot of curb and then just clips his rear. And you can see him dropping down the order drastically off onto the gravel. Have a look at it from another angle. But I think he just sent it all down the inside line. It might not be Viscount's fault there. It might be his own fault. And that's going to be very costly to the back of the field. And he certainly isn't catching that gap up and getting any overtakes by the end of this one. This is his view of the incident. He comes towards us, we close him off, has a look down the inside line. No, we outbreak him. Then we get the side by side through here. Viscal hasn't left much space, he just clips him. Daruval around off onto the gravel. That's hard to get out of. If it was run off, he'd be pretty quickly back on the track, would have lost a few positions. But you can see that everyone, Ralph Bostrom, Lungard, Samaya, miles ahead of him. Costly for Daruval. I think that might be his fault there. Mostly his, I mean, granted, Viscal didn't leave much space, but mostly his fault, and he's paid the price for that. Tell me down in the comments below, guys, what do you think? Whose fault? Is it Daruvala or Viscal in that one? I think it's Daruvala. He's sent it down the inside line. You know, Viscal hasn't pushed him a l too much. It's a little bit much, but really, you know, Daruvala just sent it, clipped him round. Well, on lap number three, we just went quickest in the final sector. Uh, not much of an update here, just a teeny one in terms of what's happening at the moment. DRX, of course, has been enabled. That will be available to use next time down that long main straight is behind. Sato is up into P12, so his teammate Viscal just in front. But as you can see, there's quite a gap from Viscal back to Sato, and we're just trying to hang on to this leading train. Poucher, of course, P2, is dropping away from the leader. Delayed, though, who may be underqualified in terms of his position. And now what we're starting to see, maybe, is him dancing away a bit from Poucher, who can't stay there. And they just, without DRS at the moment, you can't really make that easy overtakes through here. But, I mean, Viscal certainly proved that you can make overtakes. Not exactly in the cleanest way. We certainly struggled through Akra Minerali once again. Not the first time we've struggled through there, and certainly won't be the last. But we've just got to continue on in this one. We might actually, we're going to get some DRS here. Should do, maybe? Actually, no, I don't think we will, because the activation zone's down here. There might be some defending to do then. To Viscal, of course, Sato 2.7 seconds odd behind now. But, yeah, shame for Daruvala. He's pretty much out of the equation in this one, as delayed it goes quickest once again. We're going to come to the end of the lap. Another purple final sector. This is what I was worried about. A very fast Viscal coming at us. He's going to try the outside line. We block off the inside line. And we managed just to stay ahead there without taking too many risks into it. Don't want a collision like we saw earlier. And yet we should be comfortable here. Now we've got to try and use the rest of this lap. Not to defend, but to catch back up to Beckman. Who I'm sure, you know, the back of this train is probably quicker than the front of it. And that is going to help us catch back up to them. This is a lap little replay here, Liam Lawson and Theo Poussin.
Boucher are fighting here as Lawson tries to go around the outside line, get the inside for the next one, gets the run down that inside line, but it's side by side between the two of them, and the Frenchman Boucher stays ahead for P2. Delayed is starting to get away, and he is leading a very long train that we're trying to get back onto at the moment in this one. Of course, at the back of that at the moment, Beckman, so he's defending from a lot of cars, is Thierry Boucher. And he's going to have a lot of work if he wants to keep them behind him for the whole of this ground. going break. too badly. You know, it's the gap to Beckman fluctuating from about 2.5 to about 1.2 at the moment. We're trying to catch him up on that number six. Still quite a bit to go in this one. The problem is this section here, you can just see immediately as we take Akra Minerale every single lap. The car keeps wanting to turn around and I'm like, no, no, you're not meant to continue there, mate and you've got to fight it, and it is not helping us at the moment. As you can see, Joe still leads out of the train. Delayed leading by a huge chunk here. He has got a massive lead at this point in the Grand Prix, and he's just sort of gliding away of a Poucher who is defending from a train with eight cars in it, and we're going to try to make that nine as we go quickest here, but Vent Viscal goes quicker. Has just set the fastest lap of the race. So you can see he's got some pace on him at the moment. Do we? Well, we're all right. We're going all right here. Viscalo showing why he's on pole for the feature race. And, you know, we've just got that challenge to be within one second when we get to the DRS. Well, the place where you... I don't know what it's called now but where it actually registers whether you're going to have DRS or not because that is the important thing, you know we need to be within a second there, not at Aqua Minerale not at the chicane not at the end of the main straight we need to be within a second, it's then and that's what we're struggling with at the moment is being close enough to him at the correct point of the lap I know I did cut that a little bit but I mean, game time, we lost a bit of time just didn't have to take Aqua Minerale because I hate it um, but yeah, we're not going too badly here as we get a warning for exceeding track limits there, that's fine. That was the only way to resurrect the situation and once again, we're going to be more than a second further back. And if these guys can't overtake each other in this DRS train when they're within four three tenths, then that's going to be a problem and there is currently a yellow flag, green flag, someone's going slowly as we're being caught up now. Dan ticked him out the session. What a shame for their team as Viscal's coming through up into P10. No way we can defend him this time round here. Absolutely nothing I can do in that situation, but what a shame. That would probably be a mechanical failure there. Real, real shame, you know, for the team. You know, Deruval around, thanks to, well, Viscal in front of us who thankfully kept us the right way round when he went to pass us, and now ticked him out thanks to a mechanical failure. Really bad luck for them. They suddenly weren't scoring many points at Bahrain, but they're not going to be getting any more until, of course, the feature race next time, unless something mad happens and Daruvula stands up in the points is in front. I saw a little bit of contact there. And I, I don't know what's happening in front, but there's some massive fighting into the chicane. Fantastic stuff between Beckman and Vershaw. We need to stay within a second of Viscal here. Ideally, and we're going to be just outside of it down the main straight, so we're not going to be able to go for an overtake. Well, I may have been a bit mistaken there. We've managed to just get into it under the braking zone. I'm braking a little bit later, within 9 tenths, but you can see in front there is going to be potentially some fireworks here as Lorim Zendeli and oh my days what is this action here Zendeli and Beckman side by side we've got Viscal there we're going to easily catch up to it I don't know if one of these guys has got a problem or something because we are going very slowly here Zendeli is just absolutely parked here I don't know what's happening but he's got absolutely no pace at all we nearly lose on the exit as behind Joe and Sato are breaking away. But look how slow this is. Is his teammate going to send it down the inside Caution. here? Beckman Caution. is. There's a yellow flag. 
What's that for? There's a yellow flag in front. Incident in the next part of the track. No overtaking through the yellow flags. Oh, Jory Vips. Out of the session. I've totally scrapped Akramin Ali at this point. And Viscal's going to go for the move on Zendeli. Shame for Vips. He won't be able to continue on in this one. We're going to get DRS here. And it could be a bloodbath after the main straight into the first corner here. Because Viscal is going to be going for the move on him. Pretty close here. We're up into P10, thanks to, sadly, for another driver on mechanical failure. We only have 20 left in this Grand Prix. Zendeli must have a problem. You can see how the field's so spread apart, and I think that's from just Zendeli having a problem here. He's so slow. We've got DRS, despite a very, very scruffy lap. So hard to follow them. And now in front, Viscal goes for the move on Zendeli. And that is a pretty comfortable move. Or is it? As Zendeli looks to fight back here, and he might just be giving us an invitation to the party. As Joe's there now behind. Sato's coming. Not where I'd usually go for an overtake into. But it may we make it work. Yes, we do. And now Joe's come to join the party. Absolute madness here at Imola. We're back up into P9, where we were before Viscal overtook us a while back. Um... So, yeah, we're doing all right so far. Considering we got pushed out wide at the start of the Grand Prix, one position away from where we started on lap number 10, and it has been an action-packed Imola sprint race here. Just go over the roller coaster there. Now we're going to get DRS as behind. Joe versus Zendeli. Zendeli's got to have a problem here because this is super slow, and he's just going to about defend the position, or is he? They're going side by side out of there. Zoe's in front. Wow. Well, what a shame for Lorim Zendeli. What a shame. Could have been so much more in this one. He was really high up. It was going to be points. He's dropped well out of it now. P11. And it's nothing he can do. An absolute sitting duck here. As Alessio Deleida is comfortably running away with this one. Lorin Zendeli is having a disaster at the moment. He's lost out to Wanyu Zhou. And here comes Mariano Sato, pushes him to the wall. It's going to be side by side into the first corner. A close battle here. Sato versus Zendeli. Zendeli's going to try and stay ahead, but Sato sending it there. It's going to be a close one, but yet Zendeli just about stays ahead of Sato. And now Drugovic sat right on the back of this one. It's going to get tasty, and Zendeli is going to be getting sweaty with all this work he has got to do in this battle. Well, lap number 12, then. I just went quickest last time round here as we are chasing down Viscal, who is in front. Struggling a little bit to him. And, of course, you've got Beckman. You've still got that train that Pouchet is leading. Delayda remains to absolutely run away with this one. Miles ahead at the moment. Fantastic performance from the Italian, yet he doesn't have the fastest lap. Viscal had it for a few laps. We have absolutely robbed it off him. And we're just sort of pushing in this one to try and catch back up to Viscal. I'll do this again. I'm not gaining advantage. I'm losing a bit, but losing less. So technically, I'm gaining advantage, but not gaining advantage to the other cars. I'm just making sure I can drive the track. Usual. Use the runoff. Make it the Warner Champions. So yeah, not too bad a result considering the start when we got pushed out. It's been a mediocre race for us. It, it's not going to be in the points as it stands as we head on to the final lap here. It's not going to be in the points, but what a dramatic race it has been. There's been overtakes, there's the been lap, collisions, lap and there's been some just fantastic driving from those like Alessio Deleida. It has been an F2 race, and it's a sprint race. Didn't even have any pit stops or anything like that to spice it up. With absolute drama here, as Zendeli might have fixed his problem. Hasn't dropped really any further away at the moment. Might have fixed his problem. That would be good for him, but p is going to be a disappointment here. Yes, we haven't managed to finish in the points. We're not going to, but, you know, after that start, getting pushed wide... There's not much we can do. We've driven well in this one, and we're just going to have to bring it home now. You look at the field, and it is pretty spread out at this point. And even Daruvala has started to catch up to the back of the field with Boschung, 
who is in P19 at the moment. Just take that normal line through here. We're going to bring it home, hopefully nice and comfortably here in this F2 race. As oh, that's not what we needed. I think that's my second warning for corner cutting. But it's been a solid one for us. And across the line goes Alessio Delader. He wins for HWA Race Lab. And we are going to come home P9 with a lovely fastest lap here at Imola. That's the end of the race. We'll see you in Park Fermi. A nearly flawless performance here then, and a commanding victory. And Davide Valsecchi, give me your thoughts. How did they accomplish this result? I think this race was won thanks to the tire management. You have to remember, it's not just about going as fast as you can. It's about consistency. It's about maintaining your speed over an entire race distance. So being able to keep the lap time competitive while still respecting the tires, that's where they won today. This is it. This is where they all want to be. Here come the top three then, out onto the podium after a fascinating race. Well then, what an F2 sprint race. A thoroughly enjoyable one for me, and I hope a thoroughly enjoyable one for all of you guys at home watching. And your winner, Alessio Delader, with a truly dominant performance, wins by five seconds from Tio Pusher, and that might not seem like much, but it actually really was. He just drove away with it. Consistent, solid lap times they weren't flying lap times weren't fantastic ones really they were just decent lap times you know sending decent lap times got stayed out front after that pole position put in the lap times and finished it 90 minutes 34 seconds point three four oh that's a lovely 15 points for him the Pouchere takes p2 after a hard fought race from p3 on the grid lovely defending work from him to stay in that position from Liam Lawson who finishes P3 taking 10 points for high tech Grand Prix from fourth on the grid and then of course Enzo Fittipaldi moves up from sixth on the grid to very respectable P4 by the end of it the Brazilian takes eight points away from this one this is part of the long train from Poucher sort of Piastri with Oscar Piastri, our teammate, finishing P5 after a P5 start. Not incredible, not a disaster. Six points for him and the team. Richard Vershaw for MP Motorsport, P6 from P9. Fantastic drive and fantastic work from him. He's messed up a 1 minute 29, 8, 4, 2, and a lovely four points to go with it. David Veckman, P7 for Campos, racing from 11th on the grid. 10 seconds behind the lead. He dropped quite a bit further back than sort of those top six drivers, but of course he was mo quite affected quite a lot by a slow Zendeli. Two points for him and Campos racing. Solid from Beckman, considering he started from P11. It's a really good drive there. Viscal P8. That's enough for him to take a point from P10 on the grid. Quite a controversial race, of course, with his collision with one of the Carlins. But overall, a decent one for the Dutchman. And we finish P9. A bit disappointing from the P8 on the grid. But considering we got shoved off the track and struggling a bit at times for grip. We do take two points because of a fastest lap. So not too much of a disaster. Wan Yu Zhou P10 missed out on points in this one. Despite his best drive so far this season. From 15th on the grid. Certainly worthy of driver of the day. Lorim Zendeli sadly dropped down to P11 from 7th. 
real shame for him, you know. So much potential for the race. But not to be. You know, starting P7 on the grid. Could have got points. But sadly, a mechanical problem sent him flying down the field. Mariano Sato, P12 for Trident. His teammate scoring once again. He's struggled so far, but... P12, not too bad from P16 on the grid. Drugovic flown up the order in this one. 18th to 13th for Univertuosi Racing. Solid for him considering poor results so far this season. With Jack Aitken, P14 for HWA Race Lab. Finishing 20 seconds behind the lead. Then we've got Roy Nissany, P15 with his teammate at Dams, Marcus Armstrong in 16th. Disappointing for him from 14th on the grid. Samaya takes P17 for Shari Racing System. With Lundgaard, 18th for ART Grand Prix. Despite moving up to 18th from 21st, it's still not that sort of result that he would have been wanting. With Ralph Bostrom, P19. Swiss driver for Campos Racing. And then Daruval rounds out the finishers. Still managed to catch up within two seconds of Bostrom at the end. But that incident sent him out of the points. Well, out of any contention for the points. Down to the back of the field. Yuri Vips and Dan Tictum sadly failed to finish the race. Shame for them, but really just wasn't to be with a mechanical failure. Of course, Carlin having a disaster with P22 and the last of the finishers with P20 for Daruvula. In terms of the teams, yes, HWA Race Lab, of course, take the win. But if you look, we've got HWA Race Lab, ART Grand Prix, High Tech Grand Prix, Shower Racing System, Prima Racing, MP Motorsport, Campos Racing, Trident. Eight different teams in the top eight. Fantastic to see. The only repeat you get is when you move down to P9, Prima Racing, and then P10, Univertuosi Racing, which means in the top 10, you've got nine different teams. Fantastically close to see. Let's have a look at the standings. We remain as the leader of the championship with 45 points. 12 points behind us is Alessio Delayed after that fantastic race, lane, well, race win. He has 33 Thieu Pouchet, P3 for ART Grand Prix with 28, 17 points behind the lead. And then Enzo Fittipaldi, Sharu Racing, P4 with 22 on the board. My teammate Piastri also has 22, with Viscal P6 on 21, but he of course lines up on pole for the feature race tomorrow. So if you can nail that one, we could see him right up into the podium positions in terms of the order. David Beckman, P7 for Campos Racing with High Tech Grand Prix. Yuri Vips in P8. Richard Vershaw, P9. Lawson, P10. With Zendeli, P11, the last of those to score. Everyone else still yet to put a point down. That's from P12 to 22 in the standings. In terms of the teams, though, Prima lead by 34 points with 67. Very dominant at the moment. HWA Race Lab P2 carried by Mr. Delader on 33 points. ART Grand Prix P3 with 28. High Tech have 25 in P4. And Sharu round out the top five with 22. Trident have one less with 21. Not too bad considering Sato's been struggling this season. MP Motorsport have 18. Campos Racing have just one less with 17. They're down in P8. Carlin, Univertuosi Racing and Dams are still yet to score, but it's pretty clear that it should be easy take for Prima in the team standings as it stands. Hopefully that'll change and we'll get a bit more action in that, but it looks like it's going to be sailing through for Prima, seeing as only one of the drivers from the two teams for all the other teams seems to be doing really well, apart from High Tech and MP, but they're much further down the order. So there you have it, starting to form up into a bit of a battle, but I have to say for the championship, Delayda, Poucher, they're looking good, Fittipaldi and Piastri is looking decent, Viscal's looking decent, Beckman, Vips, Vershaw, all of them could get into the mix. In terms of the team standings, it's looking pretty plain sailing, as I said, for Prima, but a close battle behind between HWA, ART, Hitech, Sharu, and Trident. There's your race result then. Alessio Deleda wins here in Imola in the sprint race with Poucher, P2, and Lawson rounds out the podium. That's it for this video, guys. Another lovely F2 race. Plenty of drama in this one. Plenty of overtakes. Plenty of 
everything you could want in a Formula 2 race. Fabulous to see. Thanks a lot for watching and catch me next time on this channel, channel for hopefully another exciting bit of racing. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe. And